we're having to deal with more extreme weather from climate change. Yet at the same time, we were despairing that our weather forecasts were potentially getting less accurate. Now we have AI meteorology. It's better, it's faster, and yet, amazingly, it's also cheaper. Welcome to Disrupted. I'm Elena Casas. As climate change leads to more unpredictable weather around the world, accurate forecasts are more important than ever. But predicting the weather is inherently complicated. National weather services in developed countries use enormous supercomputers to crunch huge amounts of atmospheric data. But now some researchers say that work can be done more accurately by using AI. One startup looking at using artificial intelligence to read the skies is Atmo, and CEO Alex Levy joins me now. Alex, hi. How can AI learn to forecast the weather? It wasn't clear at the beginning whether this would be feasible, whether the results would be better, but we've since found out that it's possible to create AI meteorology that is up to 50% more accurate, it's up to 100 times more detailed, uh, but amazingly, even for all of that, it runs 40 to 50,000 times faster. But how can it be more detailed and more accurate? Well, the way to think about it is the difference between uh, learning from the textbook and learning from experience. The classical way of doing forecasting was a very logical method called numerical weather prediction that tried to predict the weather by writing down all of the physical equations of the atmosphere. By contrast, the AI approach to meteorology studies vast quantities of real weather data, makes millions of predictions itself, and each time it makes errors, even very tiny errors, it issues to itself millions of corrections, which means that as it progresses, it becomes more and more accurate. And Atmo argues that the speed of AI calculations can also make for more detailed forecasts, even in places that lack historical weather data you now have more time and more resources available to you so you can turn up the detail in the forecast. And that's allowed us to create forecasts which are 100 times more detailed. We've heard a lot though, Alex, in other fields about AI hallucinating false data. How can you trust it? Well, you can trust it through really vigorous uh, uh, verification. So one of the wonderful things, of course, about weather forecasting is uh, you can make a prediction and you'll find out quite promptly whether you're right or you're wrong. That means that we can tap that resource to constantly verify or refute the predictions of the system. And, and that's now why Atmo is in use by some of the most elite weather users in the world. So Atmo has customers such as the U.S. Air Force, uh, the Navy, even entire sovereign countries like the Philippines. Atmo is one of a number of firms, including Google-owned DeepMind, who hope the speed of AI forecasting will give them advance warning of less predictable weather events like hurricanes. Atmo's clients include small island countries like Tuvalu, who are hugely vulnerable to climate change. We're having to deal with more extreme weather from climate change. Yet at the same time, we were despairing that our weather forecasts were potentially getting less accurate. Now we have AI meteorology. It's better, it's faster, and yet, amazingly, it's also cheaper. How does your partnership with a climate vulnerable country like Tuvalu work then? What are you able to offer them? There have been a few really powerful uh, forecasters, uh, like the American forecasters or the European forecasters or the UK Met Office, and they've had the resources to build these wonderful global models. However, no surprise, the US global forecast performs best over the US, and it tends to perform uh, much uh, more poorly in areas that are not uh, as closely monitored and among those often are developing nations. And so even though they have access to some of these same global forecasts, they live in a different meteorology world. But AI does require a huge amount of energy and computing power to run, doesn't it? So isn't this still using a lot of resources? Well, it's all on a relative basis. So I should tell you that in our case, we've been able to reduce the basic compute footprint on what would be considered a gold standard forecast by something on the order of 40,000 times. Now, that's unusual. That's an unusually high gain. We're very fortunate to have found this result in meteorology. It's not true in all, in all AI applications. Some of them are extremely resource intensive. Uh, but it's really important to note that that classical method of doing weather forecasting is among the most laborious calculations that humanity performs. So to give you a sense of, of the top 500 supercomputers in the world, roughly half of them are used part-time or full-time in order to predict the weather and climate. I think probably within three to five years, uh, the predominant 
uh, and most respected weather models in the world will probably almost all be AI models.